Hello everyone, today I will give my opinion and review every single Genshin Impact character with a time limit of 30 seconds. These reviews will be categorized by element and we are starting with Amino. For the first Animo character we have Kazuha. Kazuha has really unique gameplay with gathering enemies up with his E and then plunging on them, which I think is a great concept. His ultimate is incredibly satisfying and the reactions he can proc is just absolutely fantastic. He also looks cool and his backstory within the story quest is quite interesting. All in all, I think Kazuha is a very successful Animo character and I can't wait for his rerun. And next up we have Zhao, our short king. I think Zhao encompasses the idea of an Animo or a wind DPS extremely well. Because he's quite a nimble character, definitely inside of his ult. So he feels extremely fast. Him being able to jump up extremely high to then spam plunge attacks upon his enemies also is a great form of gameplay. And it's quite fun to just be Mr. Trampoline Man. His damage is outstanding, even though you do need some specific team comps for it. And I think Xiao is just what you want in an Animo DPS. Then next up there's Fenty, the Animo Archon. Fenty just has a giant suck on his ult where he can easily gather up a majority of the enemies together so you can AoE the hell out of them. He can also be a taxi with his E ability making him able to lift up high into the air to gather things in the open world but this doesn't offer a lot of combat versatility. I think Fenty is quite a nice animo archon but his gameplay in Abyss usually just comes down to pressing ult and swapping out. And now the animo traveler. The first ever character you obtain on your journey and he's alright. His E hold skill has some interesting interactions where you can swirl enemies a lot in a short period of time. And his ultimate has the unique ability to strip resistances. The best out of all Animo characters. Unfortunately the ult is a little bit clunky to use and it pushes enemies away for you. But as the traveler he is your main character and a good first character. And for our last 5 star we have Jean, the character no one actually wants but everyone gets. As a standard banner character you will most probably pull Jean somewhere along your Genshin journey. And I wouldn't discredit her as she fills the unique role of being both a healer and an attacker and actually has quite interesting gameplay with using her E to knock enemies into the air and using her ult to heal your team. I think Jean actually is quite an interesting unit and is quite fun to play and I'd say she's build worthy. Now for the first Animo 4 star we have Sayu. Sayu is incredibly fast with the E and she can spin around in the open world but you get stuck on terrain so easily and I personally don't like using her in the open world just for that reason as it is really annoying. She can be alright in battle but I think her damage is quite low and she doesn't really fill the role that most Animo units do with procking a lot of reactions. The heal from her ult is decent but I think Sayu is the weakest of Animo characters in combat. Amazing voice acting by Lily Pichu though. And for our last animal character we have Sucrose. Sucrose is the most accessible animal character as she is a 4 star. And she does everything you would usually want in an animal character like Kazuha or Venti. She does it on a simple basis where she can cast her E skill twice, strip resistances of enemy. And she can even give your team elemental mastery through her constellations. All in all I think Sucrose is the base animal package in one hero. She is good, quite fun and satisfying to play by proccing a ton of reactions. And now on to the Geo element. For our first Geo character we have Ito. The man, the monkey, he hits things with his club. It hits really hard. It's a ton of fun. He does a ton of damage. Outside of his ult, he doesn't do a ton of damage. But he can summon a cow to do a ton of damage. His character looks great and he's tall as hell. His voice acting is amazing. And was done by the same voice actor as a voice actor from Persona 5. Which we might see more of later. Ito is great. He just likes hitting things with a stick. Next up we have Zhongli. Mr. Osmanthus Wine himself. Also voice acted by someone who voice acted in Persona 5. His voice acting, character and everything around him is amazing. He is really cool as the Geo Archon and his abilities reflect this really nice. With a fat ass shield that you just can't break. And he drops a planet on the enemies which in my opinion is the best S3 animation in the game. He is super good, super fun and really cool. 
And then we get to the Geo Traveler. The Geo Traveler is able to place rocks down and his ult forms a circular structure around him. He actually has kind of great damage multipliers in this form. And even gives you a team wide crit rate buff. I think the Geo Traveler is probably the best option out of the three currently available. In this design, he has yellow ornaments now, and I think it looks quite neat. I also like how he has a placeable structure for certain puzzles. All in all, Geo Traveler feels like an upgrade. And for the last 5 star Geo character we have Albedo. Albedo likes to put down an elevator so that you accidentally stand on it so that you can't hit the enemies anymore. Aside from that, his kit is quite good and it does good consistent damage. And he is one of the easiest characters to build as he needs defense and defense percent. Making it a nice break from all the difficulties from crit. He is fun and his story is very interesting. The only unfortunate thing is that his hair in his portrait is not as cool as his hair in game. And now moving on to the Geo 4 stars. First of all we have Goru. Goru is a really good Geo character because he can buff all the other Geo characters and makes mono Geo teams much more viable. I do find it a little unfortunate that his kit is literally just swap into him, press E, press Q and tell him to get out. But this does enable you to use 4 Geo characters and that team comp is a ton of fun. All in all, Goru is pretty good but not too interesting on the gameplay side. And then next up we have Ningguan. Ningguan I feel like is a bit underestimated as she can deal a ton of single target damage. And the wall is really good for abyss defense stages. Ningguan has a great role in the story by dropping as many jade palaces as she can on random water snakes. Her kit is good, her gameplay is fun, but I like using her more in the swap out burst style than the main DPS style. And all in all, I think she could have even been a 5 star. Next up Yunjin. Yun Jin has quite a bit going for her as she has a counter like Beidou, even though it's less important. And an elemental burst that's really interesting where you enhance your team's normal attacks. If you have a rapidly hitting character, they tend to get a lot more profit from her utility. She also scales off defense, looks interesting and has a really interesting concept being a Chinese opera singer. And all in all, I think they knocked it out of the park with her. And lastly we have Noelle. Noelle has some of the most dedicated mains players to her name. She really likes to spin. You pop her ult, her sword becomes massive and then you spin. You can deal a ton of damage by spinning, even though it's difficult to build and her 4 star stats aren't too high. Get a red horn treasure on her, get a team around her and you can spin all the enemies to death and it's hilarious. I think Noelle is a fun character and she's great to pick up when you're just starting the game. Now onto the element that we've recently seen a lot of, Electro. And we are beginning straight with the Electro Archon, the Raiden Shogun. Her ultimate pulls a sword out of her happy place and her gameplay is insane. She deals a ton of damage when you pull out the sword and then you have about 7 to 8 seconds to just slice enemies in half. It does ridiculous damage and she also functions as a battery at the same time. It's an insane character, she's just OP. Also really fun though. Next up is Yemiko. Yemiko places 3 totems, presses her elemental burst and then presses 3 totems again. I really like her aesthetic, burst animation is amazing and her damage definitely is not bad. But placing 3 totems, bursting and then placing 3 totems again is not the most interesting gameplay out there. She is fun, her character is good but the gameplay doesn't hit the spot for me. And lastly the Electro Traveler. The Electro Traveler has mediocre damage but is a good battery for sure. Unlike the other two forms of Traveler, this one is a little bit more smooth to use. Where the abilities are not clunky and actually feel quite fluid. Unfortunately due to the lackluster damage his main role is to just give your other units more energy recharge so they can use their elemental bursts more quick. As for the aesthetic, the purple accents on his accessories do look really really nice and I'm curious to see what the next adventure form will be. And then there's Kuching, our lightning swordsman. I think she fits the electro element really nicely actually, with being extremely fast and zipping over the place while using a sword. You can obtain her from the standard banner and she has a lot of dedicated mains to play her. Unfortunately she is getting power crept a bit and her damage isn't up there, but her gameplay is fun, quite interesting. And all in all, she's a good character in design. And then for our Electro 4 stars. The first Electro 4 star is Kujo Sara. Kujo Sara provides your team with a nice attack buff and at C6 a nice Electro damage buff. I think her kit is 
clunky, but very cool. I feel like her E could be a little bit more smooth to use. I'd maybe just apply a team-wide attack buff. But all in all, the attack buff is nice. And it's a good alternative to Bennett. Even though Bennett feels better because he also heals. She looks amazing though. And her ult is really cool. And then next up we have Fischl. Fischl is the original Electro Battery. She places us around. She's all you really need from an Electro Battery and fills that role nicely. And her aesthetic is quite unique coming from Honkai Impact. All in all, I'd say Fischl is quite cool and definitely build her if you don't have the Shogun build. And then there's Razor, a wolf boy. Razor can hit reasonably hard as an Electro main DPS, but definitely can get out DPSed by a lot of the 5 stars. I think his gameplay of pressing ult and then hitting really hard with the wolf is quite neat and it's, it can be fun, but it's not that unique. He's a good 4 star starting character and he's a reasonable DPS to begin with, but I wouldn't take him into the late game. And then there's the best gameplay character for Electro, Beido. Beido's counter skill is a ton of fun. You have to predict enemy movements and block them perfectly to just get that perfect to counter. And then you can hit the enemies extremely hard with your slice. Your elemental burst is quite neat and definitely good for someone like Tartaglia. But her E skill definitely makes her interesting, fun and she looks really really cool. And at last we have Lisa. Use Lisa to climb up any sort of structure in Genshin Impact and that is my biggest recommendation. Aside from her interesting voice acting, she has an interesting design with having a massive hat and looking like a wizard. Her Electro damage is alright and she can mostly apply Electro really well. Unfortunately Electro reactions aren't good enough to really need an Electro applier most of the time. And now on to the element of utility, Hydro. First off, Ayaka's big brother, Ayato. For Ayato, it is simple. You say Omaiwa mo Shinderu, press E, hold your left mouse button and then start clapping cheeks. He has amazing Hydro applications, hits quite hard and plays similar to Tartaglia. I think his kit is quite cool with his quick flashing attacks, but holding left mouse button isn't the most interesting gameplay wise. I think he's quite good and if you love fast attacks, you'll love him. Next up we have Kokomi. I think Kokomi was underrated a lot on her release and she is one of the best off-field hydro appliers in the game. She does have to be on field to heal your team, but she gives your team a lot of security, definitely when enemies start to hit harder in the later abysses. Next to her hydro application, her gameplay is quite fun, with putting down the jellyfish and the absolutely phenomenal ult animation. I'd say Kokomi is quite a good character. And next up we have my favorite boy Tartaglia. Now what can I say? He might just be my favorite character in Genshin Impact. His gameplay is fast, fluid and quick. You have massive AoE potential. You apply Hydro constantly so the enemies can proc so many OP reactions. He looks awesome and his lore is interesting. We're gonna see much more of it later. He is the only playable Fatui character. And I'd say he's amazing and you should definitely give him a shot if he's on a banner. And for the last 5 star, the Astrologist Mona. Now Mona's comic relief thing is that she is broke and it is kind of funny. Aside from that though, I think her character is going to get a lot more depth into later chapters. As she has this unique ability to see the future sort of through stars and astrology. In gameplay she is similar to Kokomi as being an amazing hydro applier while having an ult that hits really hard. Her dash can be kind of awkward but all in all she's nice if you get her off the standard banner. For the 4 stars we begin with Shincho. Shincho is one of the best 4 stars in the game. His Hydro application is insane. You press E, you press Q, you start summoning swords upon your enemy and they're all constantly applied with Hydro. He is critical for any pyro DPS. He might just be the best 4 star in the game if Bennett also didn't contest that spot. His character design is neat and his role in some event stories has definitely been pleasant. I think all in all, Shincho, one of the must have characters in Genshin. And for the last 4 star character we have Barbara. Now Barbara is simply a textbook healer. The only utility next to healing that she provides is applying Hydro to the enemy team. But her gameplay basically consists of pressing elemental burst and E just to heal your team. She is great as a starting character to start the game off, but the most fun you can have with her is building her as a DPS and nuking enemies with your charge attack. All in all, I'd say Barbara is a decent starting healer. And now on to Pyro. For the Pyro 5 stars, I will begin with Yoimiya. 
Yoimiya is one of the many pyro DPS's. What makes her unique is that she really emphasizes the single target damage of pyro DPS. She is able to enhance her bow with pyro damage and deals a lot of ranged pyro damage. Her character design is amazing and the fireworks concept is really great. The only unfortunate thing about Yoimiya is that she is suffering from a couple of technical issues. All in all I'd say she's a good character but not a must have. And then we have Genshin Impact's favorite chestnut, Hu Tao. To deal optimal damage as Hu Tao, you have to be below 50% health, and this makes her gameplay really interesting, and gameplay around shields very cool. Her design is amazing, because she looks quite unique compared to the rest of the roster, and her impact in the lore is also cool. All in all, Hu Tao is a hard-hitting, quick, and also funny pyro DPS, and I'd say on a banner, she's almost a must-pull. And next up for our pyro DPS, we have Klee. Now Klee's concept is quite interesting, isn't it? They picked a lowly and they gave it a big giant bomb so that it can throw that at mostly efficient enemies. Klee's gameplay consists out of you trying to throw your ultimate bomb or your bigger E-bomb at the enemies to try and kill them. I wish you could gather up her scatter bombs with a Nemo. I think her concept is very interesting and she definitely is unique, but her gameplay can be a little bit slow. And that's the last 5 star we have. Monstats Batman D Luke. D Luke is like Riven from League of Legends. You have 3 E presses and they all do a slightly different slam. All of the slams are quite reasonable damage and his ultimate is nice except it pushes enemies away. D Luke as a standard banner unit is great if you get him early. You can also build him late with water application, but there's definitely better pyro DPS options out there, so he's alright. For the first 4 star we have Jin Yan. Unfortunately Jin Yan is a bugged character and her E shield just does not calculate correctly. Due to this her position in the meta is a little bit lower than it could have been if she worked properly. She is quite fun to play as a pyro shielder and has an interesting mix between healing, shielding and some offense. And her design is really unique with the rock and the music power. I just wish they'd fix her, so currently in her bugged state she's quite meh. And then there's the pyro shielder Toma. Now Toma design extremely cool. He's a tall guy. He puts shields. He does fire shielding offense. It's just that his shields are kind of fragile. They don't shield for a ton. And I think Diona together with Zhongli fill the shielding role slightly better. But as an offensive shielder and pyro applier he does that job good. Except shields are a little fragile, so I think he's okay. And then we have the last pyro support, Bennett. Bennett is amazing. He presses his ult, you get a giant zone where you get a fat damage boost. You deal so much more damage in his ult. You get healed in it as well. The heal is nothing shy of good. It can heal your entire team for a good amount if you swap around. His character is also kind of funny, with him just absorbing back the luck. And his E just launching him in the air. Bennett is a must have, every person that plays Genshin wants a Bennett. Then for the pyro DPS's we have Yanfei. Yanfei has good charge attacks where she can use her bell to proc quite a hard hitting vaporize attack. She could definitely be used as a main DPS and is a good 4 star alternative if you want to have a pyro DPS but don't own either Hu Tao or Yoimiya. I'd say Yanfei is quite good. Definitely together with Shincho, and her design as a lawyer is quite interesting. She looks cool. I think she's alright. And then there's Xiangling. Xiangling is every Hydro Applier's best friend. If you're playing Ayato or Tartaglia, Xiangling can do some damage. She does a ton of off-field pyro damage and does reasonable damage with Gooba as well. Her lore is quite interesting as she runs a restaurant in Liyue and in general has a couple of cute events dedicated to her. Xiangling is one of the best free to play pyro DPS and I would definitely recommend her. And then there's Amber. Poor Amber being told she is the worst unit in the game. Unfortunately her kit is not that groundbreaking. As a knight of Favonius her look is quite nice with you meeting her early on into the game and building a connection quickly. If you get her early on and you want to build her I would say definitely go ahead but she is an alright character at best. And now on to the most chill element. Just I'm gonna let that one settle in for a little bit. Cryo. And first up is Shen He. Shen He has quite a nice character design, right guys? 
right? And her story chapter together with Yoon Jin is definitely a lot of fun. And she has some nice character development. For gameplay, she's a good cryo buffer and her E is nice to use. All in all, it's kind of basic with just using your ult and your E. But I'd say she's an alright character. If you love cryo, she's a must have though. And next up there's Eula. Do you like running around with a hot potato that you're thinking is going to explode any second except if the te enemy teleports away? Well that's Eula. Eula is great to play. She has a ult where she stacks it by hitting the enemy and it does a giant explosion. But it can be very easy to miss and it can create some frustrating but funny moments. Her design and story around being a dancer are quite original and the way she waves a sword around is phenomenal. And then we have Kamisato Ayaka. Now Ayaka has a lot of things going for her. Her ultimate does a ton of damage in a small AoE and you can melt bosses with it. Literally. Her charged attack is quite fun to use and it's quite swift. And all her animations I think are really good. She is a great damage carry. Her story chapter is brought and she has an interesting dynamic with the Traveler that we don't really see before. If you see this character on the banner for the next 350 days, pull her. And now on to Ganyu. Now look, Ganyu's kit in principle is a ton of fun. She has a taunt where she can lure enemies together and then you can AoE ult them or you can snare them down with a good charge shot. But in reality, you're spamming charge shots most of the time, which I think is really boring. Now if you enjoy spamming charge shots, Ganyu is your character. I just think it's not a lot of fun. Her damage is insane though. And her character design is really cool. And now on to Chi Chi, a character with an extremely sad backstory and you will feel extremely sad when you get her instead of the character you want on the banner. Chi Chi does good healing and has some interesting mechanics with hitting the enemies while her E is up to heal your entire team or cursing them so if you nuke them with your DPS you instantly get back to max HP. Unfortunately she offers no offensive utility and due to that she is meh at best. Her gameplay also is not that interesting. And for the last 5 star we have Aloy, even though everyone got her for free. Now we need more of Aloy, but less of Aloy's kit. I think she could use a buff or some shorter cooldowns because she does generate a lot of particles over E. But I would like to see more collabs with Genshin Impact. Imagine Persona 5 collabs or Slime collabs in Genshin Impact. Aloy showed huge potential and I really hope Miyoyo could live up to that. Her character on her own is cool, but her kit is not noteworthy. And for the first 4 star we have Rosaria. Rosaria is just a great cryo battery. She can proc cryo resonance and do consistent off-field cryo application while having good damage. She also buffs your party's crit rate and in general is one of the better offensive support like characters where she gives your whole team a nice buff while also dealing a reasonable amount of damage herself. She has some interesting character insights and I like her in the game. I think she's a good character and she's a good pickup if you get her. And then there's Diona. Now Diona has the extremely unique ability to both shield and heal which not many support characters in Genshin have. The shield is also quite robust and this utility makes her quite good. Her ultimate also gives you added elemental mastery and all in all her support capabilities are great. I think her gameplay is a little basic as you just put the shield and the heal and you leave. And her aesthetic is okay. And her character is not that interesting. But support is amazing. And next up is Chongyong. Chong Young has an interesting niche where he changes your party's basic attacks into cryo damage through his E skill. I would like to see this a little bit more in Genshin, but Chong Young executes it decently well. His ultimate is a good single target damage attack. And all in all, his character design is kind of basic, but his gameplay is fun and can make for some interesting comps. Kaya last. Kaya man, he makes bridges, he's tall as hell, he's got a fun story and his character design is cool because he looks like a pirate. I think his kit is alright as it's mostly just off-field cryo application, but you can definitely build him to deal some good damage and he can be viable in Abyss 12. He's a great character to pick up and I think from all the starter characters Kaya can still be great at endgame. And that was my opinion on every single Genshin Impact character as for 2.7. If you got through this entire video, I really appreciate it as it has been my longest so far. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I hope you have a very nice day.